company by probably, and I'm sure that uh, uh, Attorney Williams can uh, back that up, uh, quite a few documents in the hundreds that have been submitted, not only by me, but uh, other people that support this bill. And I know they are lengthy. Um, so I hope the committee does have an opportunity to take a look at this. So the origin of this bill came about by, um, unfortunately, a, mod a simple modification I filed way back in 2017 uh, when my oldest had uh, turned 18 years of age. Um, it, because of Judge Ross in her bias uh, decisions, uh, she appears uh, not only in my case, but dozens of other cases takes one side. Several complaints were filed um, with the CJC uh, on her bad behavior, violations of the four uh, canons of judicial conduct at JC 309. And, and I would like to point out to the committee, uh, complaints were also filed in, into the BBO. Unfortunately, both of those committees, and you have a lot of those complaints uh, before you, uh, both of those committees are made up of judges and lawyers that oversee judges and lawyers, which just on its face has an appearance of a conflict. May I recommend to the committee, and I have submitted that uh, here and also in op-eds and other major newspapers around the, not only the Commonwealth now, but are picking up some of this stuff, that the BBO and the CJC in its current form be scrapped completely and a civilian board be put in place to review these complaints just like the police reform lab last year i think it's time and because of that when the hundreds of complaints i believe were sent in to the cjc uh there is no transparency the other problem is and i've asked the committee to subpoena all cjc complaints uh, on Judge Ross. I myself have a subpoena that is still sitting into the lower court um, to get my own complaints that I have filed. And the CJC has stonewalled me on my own complaints so I could present them to the committee. The same with the BBO. Judge Ross's decisions and her abusive behavior towards litigants in, in her courtroom are just outrageous. She has harmed my three children deliberately, which made them ran away, two of them, for over seven months and couch surf elsewhere. To this day, in May 29, 2019, modification to correct her abusive order, which was done illegally in 2018 of October, is still pending. It was missing for several months in the court. Hey, Mrs. Um, Swartz, just, just yeah. you know, you are over your three minutes, <clears throat> but want to conclude sure, because that. Okay, so I would encourage the committee to read the testimony because Judge Abby Ross has been harming children, particularly my own, but also you will see that hundreds of children through the Commonwealth and that uh, she should be removed from the bench before she harms anyone else for the decisions that she had made and harm my children. They're still not corrected in the court. May I support other bills to just throw some numbers out for the committee that I've heard so far this morning? Sure. Okay. Um, I believe that I think it was Chief Justice John Casey that was pointing out the problems in the probate court. Well, and Mrs. Martin, just just list the bill numbers. Yep. I believe it's uh, it might be 1907. Mm -hmm. Certainly 3840 with term limits because it will force a review process for every single judge uh, that just came up. Uh, uh, I believe it's 1077, 78, 1017. And just the latest one that went through for Bill 3840. And I'm open for any questions from the committee now or later. I will submit any documents to the committee anytime you wish. And thank you. And I hope for a favorable bill vote on H3723. Great. Thank you very much. For um, inviting me to this um, session. Uh, please know that English is not my first language, and this is four minutes. So. I have a paper here. I will try to be as fast as I can. My name is Maria Pilar Mate. On August 2017, my daughter and me were chased by her father on a parking lot while being videotaped without our consent. I was struck on the face with the phone. My daughter was crying hysterically. As a result of the altercation, his phone fell and broke the glass. 
He then proceeded to self-inflict the scratches. I was arrested, as they saw the police, a battered man and a phone broken. I was arrested on AB charges, assault and battery. Father used this event to temporarily obtain full custody of Sofia Borges on October 3rd with Judge Randy Kaplan, who wanted to see us again on November 9th, 2017, to make sure that the child was doing okay. Unfortunately, the case was transferred to Judge Abel Ross, who decided to keep the status quo until trial and left me on supervised visits for up to two hours a week until trial. The four day trial was on February, 2019, my witnesses were Sophia's former pediatrician, so for Sophia's former therapist, the GAL who conducted two investigations and three visit supervisors. Sophia's pediatrician was no longer caring for her as she had to terminate her care due to the multiple verbal threats from the father. The female therapist was also replaced by father on October 18 with a male therapist. My child also lost contact with the piano, female piano teacher who was very aware of the emotional abuse that Sophia was suffering from father on a continuous basis. My child was isolated, isolated 100% from her network of support. Additionally, on June 2018, during my criminal trial for AB charges, father asserted the Fifth Amendment right. Hence, all my charges were dismissed. During the custody trial, Judge Abel Ross was very aware of this. On May 2019, the custody judgment came out, outlining 218 clauses against me and zero, zero against father. Judge Ross had tergiversated, manipulated witness testimony and did not include my testimony, my witness's testimony, nor the testimony of my daughter, who was eight years old when she was taken from me, through DCF. Father committed perjury on his financial statement and still Judge Ross awarded him $421 a week in child support and $30,000 on attorney fees. Judge Ross left me and my child on supervised visits for the rest of my life with no path for reunification. No third parties were allowed on the visits. This means that Sophia's little sister was no longer able to see Sophia until she reached the age of 18. The grounds of supervised visits were that I coach Sophia. I am not a prostitute. I do not consume or sell drugs. I don't physically or emotionally abuse my daughters. As of today, four years after, I continue on supervised visits. Father has denied me contact with my daughter since January 2021. And during four years, I have not received one single email informing me of Sophia's medical issues, school-related matters, or any other email that will allow me to be part of her life. Me and my other child- Three minutes, so if you could close. Just one more minute. Me and my other child, who is now six, have been erased from Sophia's life. Nobody will be able to return that time lost. No money can repay the emotional damage inflicted upon Sophia and us. Supervised visits are not intended to be imposed for life and a path for reunification must be established by the courts as every child needs the involvement of both parents in his or her life. Abel Ross fails to understand this fundamental principle of law.